Devon County Council is cutting its public transport budget um, because it has to shave £50 million off its budget this year and that comes on top of millions and millions of pounds in the past few years and there'll be millions of pounds to come off in the next few years, um, which I think is completely wrong and uh, unacceptable. Um, in terms of elderly people using the bus, I've spoken to people in Ottery St Mary who use the town bus which is set to be lost. Um, they are almost exclusively elderly and vulnerable and the town bus is a lifeline and I'm sure not all of them can pay. So no, I wouldn't support that. Uh, my view is that central government is, is cutting the wrong things and targeting uh, elderly people and vulnerable people. Well, I oppose Cranbrook, um, partly because of the um, huge amount of um, high quality agricultural land that it um, is being built on as grade one. Um, it's, it's very large, um, um, but communities were told back in the 1990s that uh, one of the benefits of Cranbrook would be that um, the villages and the towns would not have to grow so much. Um, what we now find is that that isn't the case and um, towns and villages <clears throat> are under enormous pressure from development. Um, I do think that Cranbrook um, as a town doesn't have uh, any facilities really. I mean, I think that's a real worry for the people that live there. Um, it does have a primary school and I think a secondary school is set to be built there this year. Um, it doesn't even have a shop. And I do think it's really important for the people that live at Cranbrook to actually get a thriving community and that means a proper town and at the very least a shop um, and hopefully in the short term um, a, a good deal more shops than just one. Well at the moment of course I'm a councillor in Ottery St Mary so my ward is really Ottery St Mary and just the surrounding villages, although I do appreciate that some of the things I work on at district and county affect a much wider area than, than just my Ottery ward. Um, what I would say as, a, as, a, as an MP is that I would be a um, very active constituency MP and I would be working really hard to campaign for the things that residents tell me are important to me. So. In, in my opinion and in my view, I would have a greater clout than I do now and I would have a greater ability to react and to be proactive on a range of things that I am currently not able to be. And I would also have a voice at government. And, and, and when I look at all of the things that are going wrong at the moment, then they pretty much are mostly at central government and, and that's where things really need to change. I think we also must remember that um, there's quite a lot of independent candidates that will be running for East Devon District Council on the 7th of May because it's not just a general election it's also local elections as well um, East Devon District Council elections and and I think that the way things are organized this year and the number of people that are standing as independents and the will with which is being demonstrated to get them elected um, I believe that the local council East Devon could be a very different place in, in May and I really hope that happens because at the moment um, the Conservatives have a stranglehold on what happens down there and that's not healthy and things need to change and I hope they will. Well. I quite like that question because um, I think probably the last four years at East Devon District Council has, has trained me extremely well um, for whatever um, I end up facing um, if I'm elected um, to Parliament in May. Um, I have had four years of, of jeering and booing during my speeches of, of significant challenge. In fact, one councillor reported my blog to the police, the police weren't interested. Um, and at every meeting, I think it's probably fair to say that um, myself and um, other independents um, get some stick. And uh, the effect of that is not to intimidate me. It is to make me even more determined to carry on and do what I need to do on behalf of local residents. So I, I don't see or feel that the House of Commons would be intimidating to me at all. I think that Europe, um, the European Union, does have um, a lot of flaws. I think it is imperfect, um, but I think on the whole we're better in than out. 
I think that Europe has been um, very positive from a business point of view. I think the business community wants us to stay in. And also there are a number of environmental measures like recycling, like the um, landfill tax, which has meant that we are in a better position to preserve our resources than, the, than we would have otherwise been. So um, whilst Europe isn't perfect, and I do think it's too big business focused, and TTIP is an example of that, um, I do think we're better in than out. I completely agree that we need to involve young people more. Um, I've um, tried to do that myself. I've been into schools and spoken to young people over the past few years quite a few times. Um, I do really value their opinions. Um, in fact, I lodged a motion at East Devon District Council based on um, a message that came through very strongly to me about um, them wanting the vote at 16. Um, and, you know, I'll do all I can if I'm elected to try and involve young people more. I think it's really important that politicians do try and talk to young people and try and involve them in political process or certainly into in the local government process. We do need affordable housing um, but the trouble is that the government seems to be making it more and more easy for developers to opt out of um, supplying it um, and the most recent um, announcement was that for housing developments of under 10 now don't need affordable housing in them and that's quite quite wrong. Nuisance telephone calls are really frustrating. I get them all the time, particularly during the day, and the really annoying ones are the ones where they're just silent and then finally they connect to you and it's someone who wants to sell you something. Um, yes, it's it's things aren't things aren't good enough at the moment and um, you know, if I was if I did become an MP then I would try and do something about that. Um, yes, I completely see your point there. I already do and I think it's quite iniquitous that central government is penalising people on benefits and helping them get back to work while at the same time letting big business um, avoid paying tax in the way that they are allowed to do because of a whole series of loopholes in the law um, and I think um, H the recent example with HSB just demonstrates exactly the divisions in our society and, and how it's one rule for the poor and another rule for big business. And if I was elected, I would certainly make strenuous efforts to tackle that, not least because with the way things are, with the austerity measures at the moment, we need money for our public services, like our hospitals, which are under threat in East Devon, and our, our, our buses and our libraries and our youth centres and our care homes and all of the other things that are being cut. So I think it's a, a really important important point and it must be pursued with vigour. That's a really important point because we have an increasing population, we have an increasingly elderly population and with the way that the local NHS finances are we are set to have significantly fewer beds in the community and you rightly observe that care homes are closing and um, the rd and &E is full to capacity and quite wrongly there seems to be an ideological move within the government, not just the Conservative-led coalition but before that the Labour government, to reduce numbers of beds and provide care closer to home and while there's nothing wrong with providing more care in people's homes, what is wrong is cutting beds and we have a, a, a huge problem in East Devon which will get a lot worse if the local NHS ends up doing what it wants to do and, and cutting all the beds it wants to cut and in terms of a campaign yes I totally agree and I've been involved in a campaign in my area which is Ottery and I'm aware that in Sidmouth there's an issue as well with the loss of the minor or the, the proposed loss of the minor injuries unit and I'm still working with the clinical commissioning group with a few other people to try and, well I'm trying to retain the beds, I'm not sure the clinical commissioning group are, but I completely agree with you it's a problem and it should be stopped and I'm doing all I can to try and do that.
I think the TTIP is extremely worrying um, and it and I cannot understand why politicians are in favour of it. To me it seems to be um, a huge example of the way this country seems to be going in terms of promoting big business um, desires over citizens' needs and I really really hope that TTIP will get defeated and certainly I think a lot of credit should be given to 38 Degrees for raising the issue and uh, bringing it to people's attention and I know that I'm one of probably many many people that have signed the petitions as they've gone along and um, part of the problem about TTIP as well is that it, a lot of the deals will be done in secret, a lot of the court cases would be carried out in secret Big business could sue governments if they didn't, if they decreed that their profits weren't big enough. Um, I think it's absolutely appalling proposal, and I really hope that it gets defeated.